Hi again, Jules fans. Welcome back to another episode of Jules and the Blood TV. It is Monday review time as I take a look back at the weekend defeat to Oxford United as we went down by one goal to nil at the Kassam Stadium. Uh, looking at all the reports on social media, statistics on various websites and, and in the paper, um, it seems that it was a, a rather tight game for the 90 minutes. Um, but similarly to the recent game at home to Blackpool, um, we didn't take our chances when they came along and ended up losing to a... Soft looking penalty, I have to say, looking at the highlights, I've looked at it a few times. Um, but again, it comes back to us not being able to take chances when we create them and then conceding ones when we do concede them. Um, and this one coming from 12 yards. Like I said, I've already had a look at the highlights. A um, couple of contentious calls and it seems we come out on the wrong side of both of them. Um, in fairness to the officials for the goal that was disallowed for Regan Charles Cook early on in the game. Um, I've had a look at it and tried to pause it three or four times and it's it's very tight. It does look like it's come off the defender as opposed to Elliot List, which would then mean that Regan cannot be offside. Um, but if it is come off Elliot, then the officials have got the call spot on the lines when he's correct to put his flag up because Regan Charles Cook does look a yard offside. Um, one of them, again, maybe if you're up the top, you get that decision and it goes your way and you get the rub of the green. But when you're down there, you seem to not get these decisions and, and it went against us and... Despite a smart finish from Mr. Charles Cook, it was uh, ruled out. Um, there's talk about Tom Eaves again, Steve Lovell furious with officials. It's an absolute joke, is the headline on the back of the Monday edition of the Medway Messenger. Talking about constant fouling on the big hit man. Um, and it seems that one that was particularly annoying for everyone at the ground, unless she was a of an Oxford persuasion, is the one that... Mr. Eves got penalised for, despite being bundled around by about three or four Oxford defenders. Um, he ended up seemingly giving a free kick away. Um, I've said it plenty of times this season and last that he gets rough justice, I think, from from plenty of officials. I think it's purely because of his size that people think he's the aggressor in these types of situations, and that's not always the case. I mean, I'm not saying he's an angel, and I think if he was, it would take away a lot of his game, but it seems that he does get the rough end of the stick more times than not. Um, and it doesn't help us out. Like I say, the penalty, I'm not sure. I think it's soft. It's one of them, if it was the other way, we'd be screaming penalty, of course, as Gillingham fans. Um, but obviously when it goes against you, it looks to me like perhaps the Oxford player has initiated the contact. But Thomas Oley's come rushing out his goal when he probably doesn't have to. It looks like Gabriel Zaquan is in, in close attendance and can probably usher the bloke wide. Um, and unfortunately, Thomas gives the official a decision to make. Um, and then you're running the risk of it going against you, which it did. Um, and in fairness to them, they slotted it away pretty well. Um, a game of not loads and loads of chances. Uh, Thomas made a couple of good saves I saw on the highlights and read on social media um, Sunday when I was catching up with things. Um, and their keeper made a couple of good stops. Um, but yeah, again, it comes back to it. When you're down there, you come out on the wrong end of things. But... If you say that about us, then Oxford are down there. And you have to make your own luck at the end of the day in this game. And at the moment, um, it seems we still can't quite get the balance right. Um, beginning of the season, scoring plenty, but conceding plenty. Then we've tightened up defensively in the last few weeks, but we've not scored in three of our last four games in all competitions. So that's obviously something we've still got to work on. We've still got to get the balance correct between defence and attack. We've proved that we can score plenty and we've also now proved that, that we can defend properly and resolutely. So if we can get the two things um, in tandem, then I think we'll be absolutely fine. But at the moment, we're again looking over our shoulder, unfortunately. Um, and the last paragraph of Luke Cordell's match report sums it up, as always, from the optimism that back-to-back -back wins brought comes the fear of getting dragged back into trouble after back-to-back -back defeats. Um, I said after Blackpool at the game in hand was the disappointing one because I thought we deserved something from the game and if we could have won that, um, we'd, we'd look all right. But now we are only a point outside the bottom four um, with a record of one, uh, five wins, three draws and ten defeats from our 18 games so far. Um, goal difference is back to minus four. Um, in terms of match ratings, there wasn't loads in it. There's, there's, a, there's four sevens in there according to Luke Cordell and there's two sevens in ours and plenty of sixes um, and plenty of sixes in theirs as well so it was one of them games where you had to dig in and maybe see it out and take a point which would have been a decent point on the road but we, we weren't able to do it um, 
And Steve Lovell talks about us missing chances again. I mean, he's come out and said we played well. Um, and he's come out and said if we keep doing the same things, we'll be absolutely fine. Well, unfortunately, a lot of fans don't agree with that. And I have to say, I'm probably erring on that side as well. Because if we keep doing what we're doing, we're not winning football matches because we've been doing that now for nearly 30 games from the back end of January last season after we won four on the bounce at the turn of the year. Um, form's not been good enough. You can't dress it up regardless of whether we've been unlucky in games or we've, we've created chances and not taken them or referees have penalised our centre forward wrongly or, or rightly. It is um, it is what it is and the game's determined on who scores the most goals at the end of 90 minutes and if you don't do that, you don't win football matches, then you're going to be in trouble and we're at the wrong end of the table again and it's, it's something that keeps happening all too often and and other managers come in and started well and, and dragged us away from danger last season and he done a brilliant job, Steve Lovell, but he's, he's really struggling at the moment and big thing this weekend was stuff about no substitutions when you're chasing the game and he's come out and said, well, we've no need to change it because things were going okay. Well, we lost the game, unfortunately, Steve, and so then that comes back on you because surely we can chuck on a player that, that, that might be able to nick us a goal. I'd much rather, and I've said it plenty of times, I'd rather lose a game 2-0 having a go than, than just sitting back or rolling over and just losing 1-0 and let a game drift by. And It's not the first time recently that we've not used all our substitutes or, or whatever when we've had strikers on the bench when we're chasing games. And um, I think we have to question Steve Lovell again why he's not made a change when we've got the likes of Nolan Bowler on the bench, Bradley Stevenson on the bench, Darren Oldacre on the bench. They're all players that could have come on and had an attacking influence. Um, even if you have to go long, right at the end, that's fine. Um, if you can get balls into Tom Eves and then get strikers, other strikers running off him, no problem last 10 minutes. But for us at the moment, it seems that we quickly run out of ideas and then that seems to be the normal, just punt it up in the air, long hopeful diagonals and see what happens and hope that Tom Eves can produce moments of magic or win flick-ons and people are going to get in behind. But he's not going to do what he did against Portsmouth every week. <clears throat> so then it's up to those on the touchline to change things. And all right, if, we, if we'd equalised, it would have been a, a masterstroke, but we didn't. So... Um, comes back to this thing about this squad and he says when we've got everyone available we'll be fine and we'll win more football matches than we lose well we had pretty much everyone available at the weekend I'm not sure what happened to Dean Parrott I'm assuming he picked up a knock because he wasn't even on the bench but apart from that we were pretty much at full strength and had everyone to choose from and this big squad that Mr Lovell keeps going on about he didn't use it he didn't implement it from the bench so a strange one for me um he has his reasons, obviously, and he's the manager and he's paid to make them decisions. And as he said before, he, he lives and dies by the sword, etc., etc. But for me, if you've got people on the bench that could that could possibly provide, provide an, an attacking option and a, a change in momentum from the bench, then do it. Um, we do have a game Wednesday. Um, is an FA Cup replay as we travel up to the north of England to take on Hartlepool. Um, who weren't in the best of form running into the game at the Priestfield 10 days ago. Um, they got beaten at home yesterday in the National League uh, by Barnets, three goals to one. So there's no reason for me why we can't go up there and get a result, but we have to be at it and we have to play the right system with the right personnel. Um, but our home, our away record in, in cup competitions recently in the FA Cup is, is appalling. Um, Brackley twice, Carlisle, uh, Stevenage, about three years ago when we, we got absolutely annihilated 3-0 under Justin Edinburgh. It was one of the worst performances of that season. Um, we've not won away in the FA Cup for about seven years so if you're looking at statistics and omens it's not great but they are there to be broken that is the flip side um, I really hope that Tommy uh, Steve Lovell picks a strong side and really goes up there to try and win the football match and get us into the second round because Slough or Sutton after that is, is a game that we can win and then you're looking at the third round when all the big boys come in the Championship and the Premier League sides and that'd be brilliant it'd give everyone a, a bit of impetus a bit of confidence and obviously it bringing some income into the football club. Everyone has their own ideas on what will happen to that income. I'm not going to go into that. Um, but in terms of the football side of things, we need something just to give everyone a lift, don't we? So if we can start that Wednesday and get a positive result and get ourselves into the next round, we can take that into Saturday because we're going to have a very tough game at home to Luton who are absolutely flying at the moment. Yes, their away form's not quite as good as it is at Kenilworth Road, but they're sitting pretty in fifth in the league to able for a reason. So, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to be a really hard game regardless. Um, but yeah, not um, not a massive amount to talk about. Unfortunately, it's we just we dropped off again very quickly after our mini revival with the wins over um, Bradford and Fleetwood. Um, the home form has improved, 
I tweeted that last week and I said that on most of our social plat um, media platforms. I think the, the home form is showing signs of turning a corner. But away from home, we're, we're still not quite there. Um, it's nowhere near the levels it was last season uh, when Steve Lovell first took over. And obviously, if, if the home form's patchy and the away form's patchy, then we're going to be patchy and we're going to struggle and, and probably end up around where we are. Um, I'd still like to think that, that we can turn it around. I still think this squad is better than what it's showing. Um, but it has to be coached the right way as well. Um, are we back at the point now where Steve Lovell's on thin ice? Perhaps. I think Wednesday could have a big bearing on whether Paul Scally starts looking at it again in terms of job security for Mr Lovell. Um, but if we go up there and get a point, uh, get a point, get a result and get into the draw for the next round and then pick up something at home to loot and then, then maybe he gets more time. But we have to take it one game at a time. Um, each fixture as it comes, take it on its merits, take each team on their merits, not get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, but unfortunately now the, it's, it's a, the top half is, is quite a way off and we're all looking over our shoulders sadly. Um, but fingers crossed we can get something like I say on Wednesday, that'll give us some momentum and then we can improve, um, get some confidence in the league again. Like I say, the home form has been decent recently so that's an advantage for us, hopefully, when Luton come to town at the weekend. But we'll see you on Thursday for a weekly roundup, a look back at Hartlepool. Um, hopefully something positive to talk about, um, and then a preview of that game. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Please keep doing the usual, liking, subscribing, retweeting, and all that. And until next time, up the jewels. <laughs>